Good morning, students. Hope you're all doing good. What do you say in this slide? Uh, how many senses do we have? We have eyes to see, ears to hear, and mouth or tongue to taste. We could also feel the touch. We have noses to smell. Apart from that, we also have the sixth sense that is extrasensory perception. So totally we have six senses and they are inbuilt in us and they are called as sensory organs or sensors. And uh, if at all we look into the working of eyes, ears, nose, skin and tongue, uh, everywhere we could see that whatever they receive, it is sent to the brain through the nerve cell as signals. Everywhere you see they are sent as signals to the brain with the help of nervous system or the nerves. And what do we do in chemistry lab? We analyze either qualitatively or quantitatively. It could be through spectroscopy or electrochemical analysis, thermal analysis, but ultimately we'll be estimating quantitatively or qualitatively. So here we are going to club both the sensors and the analysis. If this has to be done externally, what could be done? We need to use some instruments. Say for example, the DNA capture element instrument for hereditary diseases is shown here. And I hope everyone must have seen this glucometer for measurement of glucose in blood. And this is used for pregnancy test. And the infectious disease biosensors are shown here. In olden days, the coal miners, they used this kind of biosensors for data analysis. And this is actually a BioCore biosensor platform. So this would have given you an introduction or a clue that what you're going to do in this lecture. So we're going to deal with Unit 4, biosensors and organic spectroscopy. Especially, I'm going to deal with biosensors introduction. The course outcome for this unit is that the student will be able to acquire the basic knowledge on biosensors, organic chemistry and spectroscopy. The Bloom's taxonomy level is analyze. And the learning outcome is at the end of this lecture, you will be able to acquire basic knowledge on biosensors. So what are biosensors? The IUPAC gave a definition for biosensors in 1998 that it is a self-contained integrated device that is capable of providing specific qualitative or semi-quantitative analytical information using a biological recognition element which is in direct spatial contact with the transduction element. So biosensors are not bioanalytical systems, but they'll be able to analyze quantitatively or qualitatively the bio element. So for example, enzyme electrode is a biosensor. This is the definition given by UPAC. And currently, we can also define a sensor that integrates a biological element with a physico-chemical transducer to produce an electronic signal proportional to a single analyte, which is then conveyed to a detector as known as biosensor. He is the father of biosensor, Leyland C. Clark. He invented clock oxygen electrode, which is very much useful for millions around the world for a safe surgery. And these are some of the inventions and discoveries. Uh, in 1916, the first report on immobilization of proteins was done for adsorption of invertase on activated charcoal. In 1922, the first glass pH electrode was invented, which you use in chemistry lab for determining the pH. And these are some more discoveries and inventions. So, now we can define the biosensors to be 
They are here to stay and will play a clear role in monitoring diagnosis in the near future. And the components of biosensors, we have two components. One is biological component that acts as a sensor and an electronic component that detects and transmits a signal. So we have two components. One could be the physical component, other one could be biological component. The physical component includes transducer and amplifier and the biological component includes sensitive bio element and the analyte. And bio element could be enzyme, antibodies, nucleic acid, tissue, microbial and polysaccharides and the sensor elements could be electrode potential, electric current, electric conductance, electric impedance, intensity and phase of electromagnetic radiation, mass, temperature and viscosity. And the working principle is that the biosensor consists of a biological element or bioelement which interacts with analyte. So, bioelement and analyte will interact with each other, which will be tested. And the biological response is converted into an electrical signal by a transducer. So, we have the analyte, bioreceptor, transducer, measurable signal which is converted to, which is sent to a detector. We have analyte, bioreceptor, transducer and measurable signal. So, first of all, the analyte will be recognized. Often this will include a selectively permeable membrane and the transducer number 2, it converts a biochemical event to a electrical signal and amplification it increases the power of the signal using an external power supply processing it filters and interprets electrical signals into a clinically meaningful value display it projects this value as a digital readout now what are the characteristics of a biosensor to be a very good biosensor first of all they must be specific to the analyte Say for example, if you are measuring pH, the glass electrode will be able to sense the H plus ions. So, they will be specific to the analyte. Then, they, they should be stable under storage conditions and they must also be stable for large number of assays. How many ever tests you do, how many ever experiments you do, they must be stable. And they must be independent of physical parameters like stirring, pH and temperature. And these are the biological elements which could be detected qualitatively or quantitatively. Nucleic acids, proteins including enzymes and antibodies. Antibody based uh, biosensors are also called as immunosensors. Plant proteins and lectins, tissue slices, microorganisms and organelles. So, biotransducers, it is a recognition transduction component of a biosensor system. Here we have two components. Already I told you, uh, bio recognition layer and a physical chemical transducer. They act together to convert biochemical signal to an electronic or optical signal. And the tri uh, types of transducers could be uh, based on the electrical measurement, optical measurement, thermal measurement, magnetic or chemical measurement. This is how the analyte and the bio element interact with each other. Okay, recognition agent analyte, DNA strand, complementary DNA strand, antibody virus. This is biomarker antibody and protein marker. The types of coupling between bio element and the sensor. We have membrane entrapment, physical adsorption matrix entrapment and covalent bonding. A semi-permeable membrane will be separating the analyte and the bioelement. This is membrane entrapment. Physical adsorption will help it will be used to attach the biomaterial to the 
these are the biomaterial will be attached to the sensor surface and matrix entrapment also called porous entrapment a porous encapsulation matrix is created around the biological element to help bind the sensor next one is covalent bonding actually this sensor will have a reactive group so that it can bind the bio element and based on how what affinity they have say for example say this is the bio element which has affinity towards the analyte that, that will be called as affinity sensor and if the concentration of the substrate can be measured by the chemical reaction between the bio element and the analyte chemical reaction means it is called as metabolic sensor and catalytic sensor is the one if an analyte is converted to an oxalate substrate by a bio element and this is how it works actually this is the analyte first of all the analyte diffuses from the solution uh, to the surface of the biosensor this is the biosensor so it diffuses from the solution to the surface of the biosensor the analyte and the biosensor they react specifically and efficiently so that there is a change in physical chemical properties of the transducer surface and this will create a optical or electronic properties change which will be converted into electrical signal and that could be detected biomaterial will combine with analyte to form a bound analyte and that will create biological response that will be converted into electronic response which could be measured analyte bioanalyte that creates a biological response then electronic response and measurement analyte bound analyte both bound together that will create some changes here uh, that will be sensed by the transducer either optically or electronically and amplified processed and displayed and these are some of the analytes protein toxin peptide vitamin sugar and metal ions and samples are handled uh, by microfluidics it could be uh, injected by microburets and uh, we we also have a specific places where they are placed and it could be sensed by optical electrical electromechanical thermal magnetic and pressure measurements and all the biosensors must definitely possess four properties like linearity sensitivity selectivity and response time linearity should be high for the detection of high substrate concentration sensitivity definitely it should be high selectivity they are very much specific and the response time given is 95% and moving on to the advantages they are highly specific independent of the factors like stirring ph etc a linear response tiny and biocompatible they are very much easy to use and highly durable it requires only small sample volume for testing and they are rapid accurate stable and sterilizable so biosensors are very much useful and i wish to acknowledge the slide share and these are some of the references which i used and thank you so much for your patience attention thank you